Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's a little bit of a different style of video than I've ever done. I wanted to do a little story time because I'm sure that you clicked on it because of the title but as school season is upon us once again I think that this could be a really interesting story to tell maybe. I'm not gonna go into like super grave detail just because a lot of the details don't really matter and I think I'm hoping that this video will be Comf comfort to somebody who maybe I hope nobody goes through anything like this uh, obviously we're talking about the time that I failed out of college um, I hope nobody goes through that but in the event that it do somebody does go through that I know that when you feel like when something like that happens you can feel really alone in the world because like maybe your friends are doing just fine or your family's never failed out of school or whatever and so you feel like you're the only person that this has ever happened to and obviously people don't want to talk about their failures like it makes sense you don't really want it you kind of want to like push it to the side and pretend like it didn't happen but I'm hoping that this video can be a comfort for you to know like you're not alone the world didn't end it everything is like okay so that is sort of why I wanted to tell this story and because I'm actually going back to school on Monday Monday will be my first day back to college um which is a little exciting, a little stressful, uh, just because obviously the story I'll be telling you is about the last time I was in college, which uh, didn't end so well. So we're hoping for a better outcome this time. And yeah, it'll be exciting. I'm also going to do a couple other college -y videos coming up, probably like a what's in my backpack. And I kind of want to do like a first week of school vlog, just because that's fun. I'm also 29. So I'm like, you know, the extra mature student of your dreams. Um, but yeah, let's get into this story. Actually, before I start, I wanted to ask the American viewers out there, do you guys use university and college interchangeably? It seems like when I see videos online, it's obviously like college day in the life, but they're going to like a un what I know as a university. So in America, are college and university the same thing? Let me know because uh, in Canada, at least, they are different. A university is where you go to like get a degree. So like a bachelor, master's, PhD, that is university. And then a college is where you go get to get a certificate. So like business admin or carpentry or electrician or I think maybe nursing as well, or like graphic design, like you go get a certificate. So it's a lot more like focused than a university degree. Uh, so that's so when I talk about college, I talk about the certificate college and university is about the like degree school, uh, just to clear that up because I don't want anyone to, I don't want to go through the story and then people to be confused because I'm gonna, because I went to both university and college. So that's what I mean. And so I guess we'll start this story at the beginning of my university career uh, because I was always the kind of person like growing up, my parents are, have always been so, 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 so supportive about whatever me and my sibling have ever wanted to do. They were like, we don't really care what you want to do with your life, but the thing that they were like, but we want you to go to post-secondary um, just because they, they're like, it's important to go to have that higher education. So we don't care what you do, go to post-secondary. And so I was like prepared my whole school life that when I graduated, I was going to go to university and I didn't really have a plan for what I wanted to do in university. I, growing up, I wanted to be a marine biologist, but then I got into high school and the thought of having to do physics and math and science every day for the rest of my life, I was like, uh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't really want to do that. So I'd kind of given up on that dream a little bit. Um, and But I didn't really have any anything else that I thought about wanting to do, you know? But I was like, I'm just gonna go into university. Um, in my university, at least they have this thing called U1 which is just like kind of, you can just take whatever classes you want. Obviously you haven't, don't have to declare a major or anything. So you can just take whatever classes you want. So that's what I decided to do. I was like, for the first year, I'm just gonna take whatever classes look interesting and see if anything jives with me. And so in doing that, I ended up figuring out that I really liked linguistics classes. I think I took like phonetics or semantics or something like that. And I ended up like really liking it. I thought it was super interesting to kind of learn about the study of language in a way that wasn't just learning a different language, you know? Because um, I, at that point, knew no, knew no other language. English is the only language that I was fluent in, even a little bit. I was in Japanese and Korean class, but I couldn't consider myself even semi-conversational, which I still can't, but I, so I really liked linguistics. And so I decided that I think linguistics was the major I was gonna go with. I hadn't picked a minor yet, but I was like, okay, I'll declare linguistics as my major 
because I like it. What can I do with it after graduation? I don't, I don't know, but at least I have something. Um, and then I went through three years of university um, with, I think I declared it maybe my second or my third year as my major and I just sort of took classes to work toward getting a linguistics degree. Again, I, I thought about either doing psychology or Asian studies as my minor, but I was still kind of working that out. But then one day, I think it was around my third year of university, I started to Google like, what can you do with a linguistics degree? Because I was like, okay, like if I graduate in the next couple of years, what what do I do with that, you know? And so Googling, I, I still, I was like, I don't really know. And a lot of the, unfortunately, linguistics is a hard major, like a hard field to like get into. Mostly because there's not a lot that, not a lot of companies or a lot of people look for just linguistics degree. Because if you say, what can you do with a linguistics degree? Be a translator or an interpreter. But I was like, well, I don't know any, I don't know either any other language though. So I can't translate or interpret anything because I don't know the other language. Okay. Or it's like, be a professor or go into speech pathology. Speech pathology, at least where I live, very competitive to get into. And I don't, and to be a professor, I'd have to get like a PhD. Like, what? what am I doing? I don't really want to be a professor. So I was kind of like, okay, I don't know what to do. But then something that popped up was an ASL interpreter. And I was like, oh, you know what? I think that would be kind of fun. Like ASL is a language I've always wanted to learn. And that's fun. Like I I think that that, like I, I, when I've seen them around, like that's interesting. I'd love to do that. And luckily enough in my city, there was a, so I was at a university, there was a college that had an ASL interpreting program that was a joint degree. So you did both university and college. And so you got a degree and a certificate at the same time. And it was a linguistics degree that you got. So I was like, well, perfect. I've already gotten a lot of the linguistics classes out of the way because that was what my major was. And I could, and then at the end, when I graduate, I will be an ASL interpreter, like perfect. I will do that. So I started on that journey. I went in, we had like a first year like deaf studies program and then you went into the interpreting. So I did that, completed that, really enjoyed it. I had the best time, I had the best classmates and I was so excited that I finally had another language that I could communicate to people in. Like I got pretty fluent in ASL. Like I could talk to most, if not all deaf people. Like I could at least get by in a conversation and stuff, which I couldn't do before. It was really exciting. I really liked it. I worked harder than I've ever worked at anything in my entire life. Like I didn't really study in high school because I hated studying. And I was still a pretty good student, even though I didn't really study. Like I still, I was a very like middle of the road student. I was like, C's get degrees. I just want like 70%, like whatever. Like that's, and I'm not gonna work any harder than that. But this program, I worked so hard because I was really bad at ASL when I started and I didn't want to be bad. So I worked like, way harder than like all of like my close friends in that program. I worked harder than them for sure. Like I really, really busted my ass and it seemed to be working. Like they could tell that I was putting in the effort to like try my best. I still wasn't like, my signing was still kind of stiff, but like, I was like, I also don't know how to get rid of the stiffness because I'm just, that's my, how my hands move. Like I'm just kind of stiff. Um, but I was still like, I felt pretty good. I felt really confident. I was like, okay, we're gonna go into the interpreting program. And then we went into the interpreting program. And I knew with this program that there were some things that of course, like with any program that you maybe I didn't love about the program, but that just is pretty common. I would say like, there's always something. And it wasn't even just like one specific thing. It was kind of just like the air around the program was very like it, like because ASL is not a, like a language that you can like mark, you know, it's like up to the teacher's discretion, right? Like it's not like writing a math test. Like this answer is right. This answer is wrong. Well, ASL, there's a lot of variance. Like the way that you interpret something is not word for word because ASL has a different grammar structure. So you can interpret something in lots of different ways and still get to the same end result of like, that's a correct interpretation. So it was a lot of it was up to the teachers like, yes, that's right, yeah, no, that's wrong, what kind of thing. And there was definitely this air of like pressure, I guess, of like, you know, the t it's all it's all based on the teachers and if they like you or not, they'll probably mark you, like if they like you or not and like, do they like me? I don't know. And it was like very stressful because you, and we also heard lots of stories about just like the, the terrible times that a lot of people had in the program, like nearing the end, they were like, it, I was like crying every day and stressed every day. And like, 
and a lot and we heard stories of lots of people getting um told that they should voluntarily withdraw from the program uh because they weren't ready or whatever and so that was always like the air of like if they call us into the office alone they're gonna tell us that we suck oh my god and unfortunately that sort of thing did happen to a lot of my friends in that program we went from a class of like 12 to a class of four by the end um and so it was like we were very stressed and i remember even my parents at the time were kind of like why are you being so stressed about it like you'll you'll do fine you're being fine stop being like they thought it was just like regular anxiety stress which i guess it, part of it was i guess but then we got into the last year of the program and because there was only four of us I was aware that I was probably the worst in the class. Like I wasn't delusional into thinking that I was like I I could I can see my friends interpreting and not and I would say that I wasn't so bad that I was like oh like there's no chance or whatever, but I was definitely like there's a lot of like there's certain things that I'm like on par with them, maybe a little bit better sometimes, but like I can tell that I'm like the worst signer in this group of people. You know, and I'm working really hard and I'm trying, but like, I'm also, I can tell, I got it, I know. Um, and, but I was still getting really good marks. Like the mark, which is something that was something that quite frustrated me because it seemed like the marks didn't really matter in this program. They were just kind of, they were kind of willy nilly given out to like, it's like whatever, but they could just give you like one time I got a 34% on a test for no reason. Like there was no feedback that said, and, and I even asked for clarification and they couldn't give me a response, a reason as to why it was bad other than like, we just wanted to, give you a little kick in the pants so you can work harder for the next one, like that kind of stuff. So I was doing well. My GPA was like a 4.0. <laughs> and then right, and then our last semester was like a work experience thing where you like weren't in the classroom, but you went to like shadow a real working interpreter and kind of start in the path to like get you into the working mode so that when you graduate, you had experience in a different field. Uh, so like right before that semester started, I got pulled aside by the teacher and told that I should probably withdraw from the program um, and t and for a year, like practice for a year and then go back to the practicum the next year. And that it kind of shocked me in the sense of like my marks, because like there was of course like a certain, you had to have like a, over a certain mark to get into practicum, but I was well surpassed that. So I was like, you're giving me these high marks though. Like, I just don't understand. Like, don't give me the high marks then. Like, make it so that I don't pass, to, so I don't get into practicum. Like, don't pass me and then make it my decision not to go into practicum. Like, aren't you a teacher? Hello? So I, I'm not gonna lie, I was quite upset at being told that I should withdraw um, from the program. And I think that in this program, lots of people just listened to the teachers. Like, I just know, because of course you're gonna listen to them. Like, it makes sense. I'm just too dang stubborn. Um, so I did not listen and I was like, well, you gave me like, I got the marks, I'm going to go into practicum. And so I did. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you, uh, the first, like that, because it was like a 12 week program. The first six weeks of the program were the worst six weeks that I've ever had in my entire life. I hope to never be back to where I was in that moment. It was like the worst. I became a shell of a human being. I was hysterical every single day. I like couldn't eat, I couldn't really sleep, I just like couldn't do anything, I was so stressed, you know, and like I just, there was no, there was no ending of that for me at the time, and I would call my parents like every day, like just hysterically crying, like being like, that's it, I'm done, we're, it's over, I'm finished, I can't do it anymore, we're done, and there were lots of like reasons for me being like done, which don't really matter, like the actual like, you know, things, it was just, I was under a lot of pressure and kind of felt like nothing I did was good enough and was sort of told that nothing I did was good enough and I felt very like they were upset with me for not listening to withdrawing myself and were trying to kind of force me to withdraw myself but I was like well I was like no and then and I'm, I'm quite again I'm stubborn but I would call my parents like every day and I'd be hysterical like I'm done that's it we're finished we're done and something that both my parents were again very supportive and lovely and beautiful and put up with me but something that both of them said in sort of different ways was something that I actually I think is really good advice <laughs> so I'll tell you but they they told me that like they're like Ali if you want to be done if that's it if you're done first of all sleep on it you shouldn't don't make a rash decision when you're this upset like go to sleep wake up in the next morning and if you're still done you can still send the email because whether you send it tonight or tomorrow morning won't make a difference you can still send the email but think of it this way you know the end date 
you know your graduation date, like you know the last day of school, you know that end date. So this is going to end. No matter how it ends, it's going to end on this date or it's going to end before that date, but that is the last possible day that this will exist. It will be over on that date no matter what happens. So wh you, why not just keep going? Because you know that and look to that end date. You can see the end date in sight. It is there. There is that end date. You know, and so, and if you're, if you're going to end it early, if you're going to decide, that's it, you're done, you're going to send the email, then that is okay. But you have to then own that decision that you made. And if that, that's, if that's the right decision for you, then it is the right decision for you. And that's great. Like, do that. If you need to do that, then you have to do that. But then you, you know, but then don't be wondering for the rest of your life, well, what if I had one? Maybe I would have made it if I had stayed in the program. So you can either end it early and maybe spend the rest of your life wondering if you would ever, if you would have succeeded, or you can wait until it is over and then you'll know for sure if you would have made it or you not would have not made it. Either way, it'll end. It'll either end now or it'll end then, but it will end. What do you want to do? And I'm, st like I mentioned before, I'm stubborn. So I was like, no, I am, like, I'm more determined than ever. I am not withdrawing from this program. If I, le if I, if I do not graduate, it is not because I withdrew, it is because I failed. And so I worked hard for my fail, you know, and I told, I ended up telling the teachers this, I was like, I'm not gonna withdraw from this program. I, like, I was like, you're gonna have to fail me. Like, if you're, if I'm not gonna graduate, you have to fail me. Like, I'm not withdrawing from this program. Cause I was, cause I felt like the, lo the later in the program, later in this like work experience we got, the more I was sort of felt like I was being pressured to withdraw. That's at least how I felt. Whether or not that was their intention, I don't know, but that's how I felt. And it did end up happening that uh, at the end, because it was like sort of like this work experience went in like two six weeks blocks. So you'd like go for one place and then to the other place. And on the last day of the first block, I got a text from my teacher saying, hey, could you meet us in the office before the class starts? Because we had like, we were not in the classroom most days, but every couple of weeks we would come in one day to like talk about our work experience. And I was with my friend and I looked at her and I was like, did you get this text? And she said, no. And I went, okay, then I know what this text is. Like the failure did not come out of nowhere. I was aware. So I was like, okay, then I know, then I know what this is. And even my friends, like all of them kind of like, all of them knew what that meant. So I was like, I'm not even, honestly, I'm not even like upset. Like, I'm sure I know what this is because like, I'm so just exhausted. So they pulled me in and they failed me. Like that was sort of the gist of the conversation was that they failed me. Um, and I was like, you know, okay kind of like what you know nothing more to say I guess um and because I was like honestly like I didn't tell them this but I was like quite proud of my fail my f just because I knew that I like I worked hard and I like I earned that f technically it's no longer an f on my transcript again because I had some other issues that I had to deal with and they ended up just putting it as an administrative withdrawal I was like okay whatever I mean again I was happy with the f my gpa was still like a three point like two or something with the f I was cool with the f Cause I was, I was like, I worked, I have never worked so hard for anything in my life. I earned that F, but that was it. I failed out of college. That was the day. It was February 14th of the year 2020. <laughs> so, and that was actually, I remember finish it, like ending that meeting. I was okay, whatever. Um, and being like, I'm not sure what I'm going to do because I drove with my friend, but my friend obviously now has class until like four o'clock and it's like nine in the morning, like, or till like noon or whatever. Like, what am I going to do? I'm not sure. But I remember I went into the cafeteria and I called my dad and my mom and I was like, yep, I failed. I'm done. And that was actually, I remember it's the first moment where I was like, <sighs> like I took a breath. That was the first breath I felt like I had taken in six weeks. And it was like, I'm almost like, I feel lighter than I felt in weeks. Like, I can't believe that all the pressure now is gone. It's gone. That's it. It's over. Like, I never have to go back to doing that again. I never have to feel like that again. Like, I'm free. I'm free. And now I know for sure. Like, I failed. Cool. Um, and then came the weekend after that happened, where I definitely had a little bit of a pity party. I And I allowed myself that pity party. I think it's really important when you're feeling upset to allow those feelings to exist and to come out and, you know, not forever, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this weekend and I am throwing myself a pity party. I am wearing my pajamas and I'm gonna mope a little bit around the house for the, for the weekend because I think I deserve to mope. I just had a really, really stressful six weeks and then I failed out of college. I am 20, 
five years old and I have nothing and I've been in university for like almost eight years or something and I have nothing almost nothing to show for it because at that point because I failed out of college I didn't get my university certificate because the college kind of took place of the minor so I was like well now I don't have a minor I can't graduate with my degree so cool I've been in full-time university for like eight years and I have or almost eight years and I have almost nothing to show for it like great I most of my most of my other friends who started university at the same time as me already like have their masters and stuff and I'm like cool I have nothing great awesome so I moped for a weekend and then I decided and then as we all know on somewhere in the first week of March for me at least COVID shut down my city in my area so 2020 just really just like a one-two punch it's like I had the shittiest six weeks I failed out of college then COVID hit because at the time when I first failed, I was like, well, because I was supposed to go to Japan and Korea in 2020. And I was like, well, I can still do that trip. And I can kind of figure out what I want to do from there. Like, it'll be fine. And no. Because of COVID, I couldn't do anything. Uh, like, no one could. Like, not just me. And no one could. And I decided that I wanted to just get my degree done because I just needed to get it done. So I took five classes over that summer, like online classes, and just finished my degree. So... Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! I have a degree! Uh, so I have a degree in linguistics, I minored in psychology, and that's what I ended up doing. So at least I have that now. Um, but, and sort of what I realized through failing out of college and then going through that and then getting my degree is kind of like the world didn't end when I failed out of college. And maybe because of COVID things were a little different, but it didn't even like, it felt like very quickly it didn't even matter. like. You know, for so long it was like, if I fail out of college or or fail a test, whatever, then I am a failure, and everybody will know that I'm a failure. And now, of course, I do not have. I have very supportive parents, which I know can play into that. I do not have parents that are like, you need to be successful and like are really putting the pressure to like, you know, like get good grades and stuff. I never had parents like that, so I can't. You know, so I'm sure that that definitely plays an impact on how you feel when stuff like this happens. But like. The world kept going and like yeah again it felt like very quickly it didn't really even matter that I failed out of college like it didn't matter like even like I, when I would tell like my family like they didn't care that you know they were like that sucks but like it didn't they didn't look down on me for failing out of college and like they were like it just didn't it didn't feel like because I really felt like I was like oh I'm gonna be like the like the I already kind of was like I'm gonna be the black sheep everyone's gonna look down on me I'm the stupid one and it was like not true very quick I was like oh like and then it kind of like almost broke me out of the like oh like school is one part of life and of course is a thing like you know whatever it's important all of that education's good but it's not the end all be all of who you are as a person it is you're still a valuable human being whether or not you do well in school or not so it was kind of like oh that's quite nice and failing out of college actually gave me a really good reason to like reevaluate what I wanted in my life because I failed out of college I'm like okay what do I want to do now do I want to go back to school what do I want to do and it where do I want to go and I still don't have a full answer to that but I knew I wanted to do something creative so I started my diamond fish art Instagram and I would just start posting art I started selling on Etsy then I started selling at conventions and now I'm going back to school for digital media design uh, because I was like, and now I have way less fear going into this program of failing. Of course I'm going to work hard and not, I don't want to fail, nobody wants to fail, but now that I've done it once, I'm kind of like, I know the world's not going to end and it's fine, like, you will be okay, even if bad things happen in school, because school is not all of life, and that was like super, so it's like, I feel like a lot less, a lot more calm and a lot, like, I'll never get back to that point of stress that I was in 2020 ever again, but yeah. That's kind of my I failed out of college story. Um, hopefully this is encouraging for you. If you're feeling really shitty and down, um, if you're in a situation where you're not feeling so good or feeling like maybe you're not doing as well in school as you want to, like you're not alone, it's okay. You're not a failure. You are wonderful and super smart and just because you can't or aren't doing so well in a test or in school or whatever does not reflect on you as a person at all. And you will find your path at some point and it doesn't have you don't have to be 20 and know what you're going to do for the rest of your life and just be good at it forever you know 
I'm 29 and I'm going back to school now and you could be 40 and you could, you know, change your career path. Like you don't have to only figure out what you want to do now and like, you know, maybe because maybe it won't end up being what you like. Like it's okay. You're okay. Everything is good. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any school stories that have like like this that you'd like to share to like give some other people some encouragement if they're feeling down leave them down below of course only if you want to you don't have to share any of that if you don't want to um but or leave anybody any if anybody's watching this that is feeling down i'm hoping that the comments will be filled with like positive words from other people who have gone through school or not and we can just all make each other feel better when it feels like the world is falling apart when bad things are happening. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was an interesting story time. I know it's quite different than like the K-poppy stuff I normally do, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And I will see you in whatever my next video ends up being. Bye.